Okay, hey everybody, welcome to this tutorial for how to program a calculator in Scratch. I decided I wanted to do something a little different than what I normally do uh, so that I can put out more videos more quickly without spending money uh, since YouTube has removed the ability to monetize my videos. So, um, we're going to do a little Scratch programming. I hope you're kind of familiar with Scratch already. If you're not, I may do some more basic introductory stuff, but for now I'm just going to assume that you kind of know what's going on with Scratch. Um, it is a block programming kit. Uh, I think it has a lot of um, benefits over some of the games and things that you find in toy stores uh, where you use block programming to move robots and stuff, because it's not limited to kind of physical limitations. So. Uh, you can do a lot more with Scratch than you can with a lot of other introductory kits. Uh, I think it's a nice program. I have a 10-year-old who uses it. And um, so whether you're a child trying to get into it and you want to learn some more advanced things or uh, you're an adult or a teenager who's uh, looking to learn some programming, Scratch is a great way to start thinking in code, uh, which involves a lot of logic and things like that that can be kind of tricky to understand at first. So let's just get started. Um, to make a calculator, I wanted to come up with something that will shine a, kind of show you the concepts um, of the variables we'll be using. Variables are pieces of code that hold information, kind of like buckets. Um, so this calculator concept I'm going to load right now uh, will actually kind of show you two different, well, it's got three variables in it. And it kind of is a very bare bones adding machine. Um, and so what it does is it has these three variables, input, memory, and then this one here is the display variable. Um, I've got it showing a little bit differently. Um, but it's just gonna show us the end result of whatever it is we're doing. Um, the input variable has a slider. You can see as I move the slider, it adjusts the number that's stored in this variable. And then the memory is a place to send input to. Um, so this red arrow is a button that will actually take my input, combine it with memory, or whatever's in the memory, and then display it here, and also store the result here in the memory. So if I put in the number 10 and click the arrow, it will do 10 plus 0, which equals 10, and show that here and then also store that 10 in memory um, so that I can adjust this number again if I want. So if I click the arrow, I'll get 10 plus 0 is 10. If I click it again, it'll do 10 plus 10, which should equal 20. And again would be 10 plus 20 equals 30. And then I can slide this to a different number. So this should give me 5 plus 30, which is 35. And this is kind of the structure of variables that I want to use for the calculator. Um, it's going to be very basic, like the calculator you would buy at a dollar shop. Um, it's not going to have any room for doing order of operations like parentheses or um, exponents or anything like that. It'll be basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And so let's just go ahead and see if we can get started on that. So I'm going to create a new project. And I'm going to begin by just calling it calculator. And I don't need this starting sprite. It always starts you with this one. I don't need that. Um, what I want... Well, actually, let's not make a sprite yet. Let's start with our stage. I like to put my global variables in the stage. Um, so I'm going to go to data, and I'm going to create a variable uh, for all of the sprites called display. And this will be our calculator display. And you can see that when we have this box checked in our list of variables, it displays it here on the screen. So I'm just going to move that and switch it to large readout. So now we've got kind of a calculator display. And then we need the memory for the calculator. This will help us keep track of what we've entered previously. And by making it for all sprites, it's available for any sprite to add to, uh, change, read, manipulate, 
and it will be uh, available everywhere. So I'm just going to set this right here for now. And then later we can uncheck this box and hide it from the user so that they don't get confused about that. Okay, so now we're ready for our first sprite. Uh, so I just want to use the number one. Number one. So I'm just going to pick a basic button here. And I'm going to call it number one. And then in my costumes, I'm going to kind of resize it a little so it fits a little bit better. I'm going to add some text to it and make that text a little bigger. There we go. Now we've got a button. So now we need to look at the scripts. And each button that controls our calculator is going, or that is a digit on our calculator, I should say, is going to have its own variable. So I need to make another variable. Um, and this one's going to be marked as for this sprite only. And I'm going to call it this number. So every digit that I create is going to have its own this number variable. And when the game or the program begins, when the flag is clicked, we're going to have it set that number to the value of that button. So this one's 1. So now no matter what happens, every time I run some code within this number, I can just use the value of that number, which will allow me to duplicate this into nine other buttons very easily. So we have the number one. I'm going to go back to the stage, and we need to set up the variables for uh, these global ones also that are available to all sprites. Um, we want those to always be reset to zero. So I'm going to set the memory, and I'm going to set the display to zero whenever the flag begins. So now all we need to do is kind of set up what happens when we click the number one. So we need to go to events and we want to say when the sprite is clicked we need to make some kind of a modification. Um, so we want to move this number into the display so we can see what we're doing. So we want to say set display to this number. So let's just try that and see what happens. Click the green button, or the green flag. Now when I click the number 1, the display shows the number 1. If I click it again, it still shows the number 1. So we have the problem of that I can't enter the number 11 unless I create a button called 11. So we need some code that will handle multiple clicks and just add it to this row. So instead of setting it to this number, let's go into our operators and choose. Let's do, let's do it the wrong way. Let's do plus. Let's say we want to put it, the number we, in, first we want the number uh, that's already on the display, and then we want the, number of the button added on to that. So if we do that and we click the green flag, it resets our display to zero, then we hit one. If I push it again, you can see it's just counting up. I'm not actually able to enter 11. So that's not what we want either. So instead of using the plus, we can use this other operator called join. And we want what's on the display to come first, so we're typing basically from left to right. And then this number goes next. Now when we test our code, we see 1, 1, 1, 1, and that works exactly the way we told it to. Notice that it puts the number 0 at the beginning. We don't want that because that's not a number. That's what's called a string a string of digits. And we're not doing that. We're not adding up strings. We're adding up integers, whole numbers. So what we want to do is we want to transform this number. And so the best way to do that is to either add zero or 
we can multiply by one. You can use whichever you're most comfortable with. If you're not uh, familiar with multiplication, if any number multiplied by one equals the same number. Um, so this is basically just going to force Scratch to turn that into a number. And then the same way with adding zero. Any, if you add zero to any number, you wind up with the same number. So let's just look at those both real quick and verify that they do the same thing. So I'm going to hit the green flag. And when I click one, you see that the zero is not there anymore. But I can still type in 1,111. The same is true for multiplying by 1. When I click the green flag, I can enter 1,111. No problem. Great, so you can pick whichever uh, option you're most comfortable with based on your level of math. And uh, now we're ready for our next button. And I'm just going to skip adding 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, because we're going to want to duplicate any code we have in here on the first button for all of the others, um, because they're all going to work the exact same way. The only thing we're going to have to change on each of them is the value of this number. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a sprite for our addition button. Um, let's use these green ones. It'll stand out a little. We'll edit it just a bit. Put in some text. Addition. Now we just kind of size that up a little. Put it in place. And then we've got a plus button. So we kind of need to figure out what's going to happen when we click the plus button. And we kind of want to think back to the calculator demo I had before. We want every click of this plus button to combine the memory with the display and then echo the result back to the display. So what we want to do is take a data... Actually, I will start with events. We're going to say when the sprite is clicked. We want to do uh, set the memory to a value, and the value is going to be the memory plus the display. And I use the addition operator here because that's the button we're programming. So now we're going to say, once we've set the memory, we need to echo that back into the display. So then we're going to set the display to whatever's in the memory. Okay, so let's just see what that did. That's kind of the way I like to program. Okay, one plus, see, it moved what was there up here after combining it with memory. So then I put in another one. Uh-oh. We already see a problem. It didn't clear out what I had had there before, so it thinks I entered 11. So what I need to do now is enter plus again, and it shows that it is adding correctly, but it's not keeping track of what we've clicked um, as far as these operators. So we need another variable. So let's make one that is called a Boolean variable. Booleans are basically true or false. And in Scratch, you would, rec you would um, recognize those as zeros and ones. So we're going to call this should reset. And this is available for all sprites. And the idea behind should reset is that it will start as true. Uh, sorry, it, it should start as false. Okay, 
And then when we go into our button code for addition, I'm sorry, for the number one, we only want to join these together if it should reset. So we need to say, uh, under control, we need to say if And then I'm going to take this equal sign, and then we're going to say if should reset equals true or one, then we should combine those numbers. Otherwise, and here's where I made a mistake, but we're going to fix it, we need if else. There we go. So if should reset is true, we're going to do this. Otherwise, or else, we're going to do something else, which is set the display to zero. And then set the display uh, accordingly. So let's see how that worked. We enter the number one, we hit plus, enter the number one again, hit plus, now we got two. Let's try 11 plus 11, that should give us 22. 11 Uh-oh, okay, so, oh, here, here's the problem. Should reset, if we shouldn't reset, then we should add them on to it. If we should reset, then uh, display has to go to zero. And so how do we know if we should reset? Well, if we've clicked the add button, we need to tell it that it should reset, which means we, we're ready for a new number. Um, so once we know that should reset is true and we've done everything we need to do with that, uh, we're going to set should reset back to one right here uh, in our number one button. So now let's give it a look. One, or sorry, 11 plus, see now should reset is true. So this should let us re-enter one, one, Okay, there's another problem. Let's see what happens. Should reset did not go back to zero. Oh, that's why. We didn't reset it to zero. We had it set at one. That was your fault. Okay, so now we click the green flag. One plus one equals two. Good. Green flag again to reset. Eleven plus eleven equals 22. And we've successfully created an adding machine. And it looks like I'm coming up on 20 minutes, so why don't we stop this part right here and pick up on part two, where we will expand into subtraction um, and some of those other buttons. Um, so when I come back, what I'm going to have done is duplicate all of these like so. Got the number one, I duplicated it. Now it's called number two, so I just need to change the text here. And you'll see it updates right there. And then I'm going to change the value of this script so that this number is two. Now anytime we perform an action with this number, it's going to use the new value that we had set. So let's just verify that that works before we take a break. Green flag. 1 plus 2 equals 3. Perfect. All right. Uh, let's take a break right there, and we'll pick back up with all nine numbers or ten numbers uh, set up here, and then we'll start programming the rest of our operators.